two, four. Welcome to St. Andrew's Sunday Worship. We're glad to have you with us today. If you have any prayer requests, if you would please email Father Jim, the email address that's on the page or on our screen, and we will get started with worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God, and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who do not have hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. 
You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Four, three, six. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and shut the door. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You know, when I was younger, uh, I worked and didn't save uh, my taxes. I was self-employed. When I showed up into Farmington, New Mexico, I got a note from the Internal Revenue Service that said, come see us. And they said, uh, you owe a lot of money. Where is it? And I said, well, I was, I was fixing to save it. Well, there's other times I said that uh, as well. When uh, I was in high school, my senior year, uh, I, I put off inviting uh, a girl I knew to the prom. And uh, when I finally got around to it, <clears throat> she said, I have another date. Why didn't you, why didn't you call me sooner? I said, well, I was fixing to get around to it. When I was in engineering school in my last year, I had a senior design project and I had to build these re, you know, model reactors and I was extracting antibiotics out of red beard sponges. My college advisor called me in, he said, Jim, you know, I do fail seniors. He said, how come you haven't been working on your design project. I said, well, I was fixing to get to it. You know, that word fixing is so, such a wonderful word. It, is, it means uh, that I am going to uh, go do it, but typically it winds up meaning uh, I'm going to do it later, which winds up meaning uh, <clears throat> I'm going to never do it. And then finally it winds up being it's too late. 
you know, once I, if I, after I, you know, we make all of these things we do to put things off. And what happens is we miss out on some of the most incredible things in life because we will not prepare. I don't know why it is we're wired that way, but we just will not prepare. And we have to be reminded over and over again. And we are today in the lessons to prepare. In Thessalonians, uh, Paul talks to some uh, concerned citizens. This is a church he started. And he talks to some concerned citizens, and, and they're saying, well, wait a minute. If Jesus returns, what happens to all the people that are already dead? And Jesus sa and uh, Paul says to him, look, it's, it's taken care of. Uh, they were faithful. You were faithful. Uh, you're prepared. And then Jesus tells a story about the bridesmaids and it said that some prepared for the wedding and some didn't prepare for the wedding. And the ones that didn't prepare completely lost out. Preparation, especially spiritually, is important because the uh, opening prayer was about hope. It said hope. And, you know, for many people, hope means, well, I have a lot, I'm optimistic and I, and I just wish it would happen. But hope in a Christian sense means something different. It's the certainty that God is going to meet us in difficult times and, and good times as well. But it's the certainty knowing that God will meet us. And it's knowing God will show up. And it's not only in the big picture, you know, after we're dead and there's a resurrection of the dead and Jesus returns. And, you know, that big picture one is one. But maybe more importantly is the little picture. Is It's the certainty that God is showing up today, this afternoon, next month. But God is certain to show up in the most difficult of times. And so often we don't see it or we don't think it's happening or we wish it was better but it has a lot to do with preparation you see god is doing god's work god says i will always be coming to you you do not have to earn it i will always be coming to you but jim you've got to meet me by being prepared god looks at me sometimes and says my child because because you are my child you don't know how to find me, do you? I'm right in front of your face. You know, Jesus tells these stories about the kingdom of heaven. Uh, that's what this parable was about, the ten bridesmaids. And the kingdom, as Jesus says, the reality of God is right in front of your nose. The reality of God is right in front of your nose. And he tells these stories over and over and over again. He doesn't tell the flip side, which this preparation speaks of. And that is... We can render God invisible by not preparing. Not that God is invisible, not that God's not coming to us, but we just can't see it. And God's like, ooh, I'm right here. And we don't see it. And then we just wish God would show up. We wish things would go better. We try to control the world around us, and none of it works. None of it works. Preparation calls the kingdom into focus, and lack of preparation makes it invisible, but it doesn't make it non-existent. So a question now for me, especially in this most difficult year, is how's my spiritual life? Or, or better yet, is God consistently showing up when I need God? Because the truth of the matter is, God wants to show up. And just like the maidens in the story, no one can do this preparation for us. We have to do the preparation ourselves. We, you know, we can't ride in on somebody else's coattails. We can't say, well, I'm part of a church, and you know, my church is like, they're all praying, and they're all doing these other things. And those are important. Those are important. But the preparation has to be done by you. It has to be done by me. And it has to be done every day. 
it's never too late to start. You can be fixing. You can be fixing to start your spiritual life or to reboot your spiritual life. But it isn't going to help because God will be invisible when we need God the most. Not God won't be there, but God will be invisible. This has been a terrible year. It's a terrible year. So many of us have needs for God. So I ask, what are we waiting for? Amen. The Nicene Creed, page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. We pray for your church across the world. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example. God of grace, hear our prayer for your church. We pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of color, religion, and language, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people to speak out against hatred and prejudice. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. We pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all her resources. God of justice, Hear our prayers for the earth. We pray for this community, for our local leaders, and for all who live and work here. Kindle in every heart a desire for respect, equality, and opportunity for all. We give thanks for all the blessings of this life. For Samantha Donaldson, Quinn Donaldson, Carol Purdy, Lyndon Mello, Reed Brooks, Jim Flanders, Louis Nico Nicolosi, Roxy Woodward, Eon Brown, Don Manges, Brian Truard, Logan Champion, Andrew Morrow, Jackson Norwood, and Joseph Yeo, who are celebrating their birthdays this week, and Tom and Christine Luss, and David and Cynthia Lewis, who are celebrating their anniversary this week. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. We pray for Preston, Sydney, Yona, Mary, 
Judy, Ron, those who are imprisoned, those affected by war, and for all those in any kind of need or trouble, for the sick and suffering, and for those who care for them, for the lonely or isolated, for refugees and prisoners, for all held down by prejudice or injustice, and for all those affected by the coronavirus. Awaken in us compassion and a humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of hope, hear our prayers for all who are in need. We pray for all who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets and martyrs, and for the communion of saints. God of mercy, hear our prayers for all those who have died, for the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayers, holy God. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. This is amazing grace.